Electromagnetic interference, EMF events, and EMP attacks can cripple or even wipe out our modern society as we know it. But is all this just the stuff of dramatic disaster movies and paranoid preppers? Or is it actually a valid cause for concern? I don't know a whole lot about uh, electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation or EMP, EMF um, events, the, that type of thing. What, what I know is that we sell ham radios, we sell GMRS radios, and customers call us looking for radios, and, they, and oftentimes they're preparing for SHTF type events or situations, and um, we get the question, like, do you, do you have anything that will protect against this ty- type of situation? Because r- radios are electronic equipment. Mm-hmm. So I guess in, in theory, if we have an EMF or EMP type event, radios are dead, right? Well, certainly they would be vulnerable, I would think. I, I guess what we should do is back up just a little bit for those who are really not familiar with any of these acronyms, mm-hmm. just uh, what are they? What in, in you know we're talking about EMF or EMI, uh, EMR. There, there are a lot of different ways of of saying this, but essentially it's all electromagnetic radiation. So I guess we have to start from square one and ask the question: What is electromagnetic radiation? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In simple terms, electromagnetic radiation, or EMR, is made up of electromagnetic waves of radiant energy. And this is also known as electromagnetic field radiation, or EMF. Radio waves are a form of electromagnetic radiation. There are some dangers of EMF. And what are these dangers? And do they affect people so much in general? Uh, An EMF event is not so much dangerous for people, however, it can be devastating for electric uh, electric devices and electronic components. So where would an EMF event originate? Where would this come from? Uh, so, you know, lightning strikes all over. The, one powerful enough close by can, can definitely affect electronics. You know, if you're ever driving in your car and you're turning on the radio, like say on an AM station or something especially, uh-huh. and you, is a, there's a storm out there and you you get a lightning strike nearby and you get that really loud static across that, that's that's what that is. It's electromagnetic interference. That's interesting. And okay, it's disrupting so- the radio waves on, on AM. So maybe that if most of the time that's not powerful enough to like t- break or destroy an electrical device, but you can see the interference manifesting itself in the the radio waves. Exactly. Now, a more severe type of event, and these are the ones that I think um, the preppers prepare for or prepare against, I should say, are things like a solar flare. You know, the, the, like the generated by the sun. Exactly. Something generated by the sun. You know, at very low levels, these elec- this electromagnetic radiation is, is pretty harmless for the most part. But when you get to higher levels um, of EMR, it can get really disruptive in Have we causing had- electromagnetic interference, you know, known as EMI. And, uh, an Have example, we ever had an example like uh, of this happening in the real world? Like, um, yeah, there have been several. There have been several exa- examples, uh-huh. um, and of course, it gets uh, once again. It, there are various levels of, or various degrees of of intensity for these things. And when you're talking about a solar flare, um, you know these things can can happen. Uh, you know if there's a coronal mass ejection that's large enough to, to shoot out there and, and disrupt our uh, our Earth's uh, atmosphere. So something and happens with the sun. The sun gets angry. So <laughs> something explodes out of the sun. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's felt here on Earth. Maybe not by humans, but electronic equipment. Right. And now there's the natural one. Uh-huh. 
That's usually attributed to something like a solar flare or a sure. coronal mass ejection. And then you have Which the man- could, could be theoretically strong enough to harm electronic equipment. Is that correct? Yes, it can. And there have been events that have been recorded in history, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, and then, of course, there's the man-made threat, which uh, I think the one that everyone thinks about is, uh, is a nuclear blast. If, if we start throwing nukes at each other or a nuclear bomb blast that is overhead, that can definitely disrupt, and that can cause a, a mass you know, EMP event. And I think that's, that's mostly what people say when they're talking about an EMP attack. That's when, say, for instance, somebody, you know, lobs a, a nuke at us and, and it, you know, detonates around us or if it detonates in the atmosphere. There's a, there's this would a certain, be like an, an act of war. Pretty this much. Like an accident. Pretty much. This is something that would be intentional by foreign country or countries going to war. And this can this can get pretty um, pretty intense because yeah, if they, if they're well if they are detonated in the atmosphere, uh, say it doesn't have to be on the ground. If it's in the atmosphere, and the higher up in the atmosphere, the more coverage it gets for that EMP attack. It's detonating, you know, maybe five ten miles in the atmosphere, maybe higher than that. It covers a much broader area, so that could take out a lot of stuff across the entire country. And I think that's what a lot of the preppers uh, prep for. There are EMP bombs that exist that are specifically made for taking out electronics, where they detonate it, you know, in the atmosphere, way up high, you know, like a couple hundred miles up in the atmosphere, and to really take out the electronics and the electrical grid of the entire country. Wait a minute. Are these weapons that exist today that countries possess? Theoretically, they do. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> We're not... Theoretically, yeah. they exist or they, they apparently, exist? Apparently, they, they do. Okay. Uh, apparently, they do exist. Now, uh, these can really... They can either temporarily or permanently disable um, all devices. And, and the entire power grid, so that can just take down. Now, here's the thing. You're talking about taking out devices, say, maybe 30 or 40 years ago. Um, that's still pretty disruptive. But today, because we all rely so much on our devices, that uh, it can really be devastating to an entire society. There yeah, have been... I, I can imagine. If, if all of our electronics... Um... Or our power grid, that type yeah. of thing, stop working. That's uh, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Now they know this can occur because there have been historical examples of something like this, and uh, probably the one that's most notable is one called the Carrington event. And the Carrington event occurred uh, September first and second in eighteen fifty nine. The Carrington event was considered the most powerful and disruptive geomagnetic geomagnetic storm in recorded history. Now, this was a global event that occurred, and it caused bright auroras worldwide, all over the world. So everybody saw this, and everyone was aware that, that it occurred. And it took out telegraph stations in the U.S. and Europe. And what was really interesting is that it was reported that in some cases, the electromagnetic current generated by this event was so strong that some of the telegraph operators could actually send messages back and forth without having a power supply connected. Wow. That's that that's pretty intense. Now this was 1859, but everything has changed today and we rely a lot more on our devices and, and electronics and we have this whole electrical grid set up. It's estimated that if such an event occurred de today, it would seriously disrupt our civilization, taking down entire entire power grids, disrupting communications, and disabling most electronic devices. Now, okay. some of this could be some of this could be somewhat temporary, but uh, some of it could also be rather permanent. So that, that's ser guess, serious stuff. My question is: this this is a natural occurring example you've got here, 160 years ago. Yeah, this is this is a naturally occurring. The fact Example. that it hasn't happened in 160 years, does that mean this is a very, very rare thing? 
to happen naturally? My understanding is that this is something that occurs every 120 to 150 years. So we're overdue. That's, we're, we're probably overdue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so perfect. So yeah, it's it's quite possible it could happen. Now it might happen another 20 or 30 years. Who knows? I'm not enjoying um, this episode. 